Thanks for hopping on this video, folks. I'm Faye, and we're getting into a seriously cool part of sim racing customization, getting those car aerodynamics in motion. From wings to splitters and diffusers, we're gonna animate the whole deal. We've got even more exciting stuff lined up after these. Before we get into the good stuff, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and give this video a like if it ends up being helpful. Stick around because by the end of this, your car's aerodynamics will be flowing smoother than a perfectly executed overtake. Let's roll. All right, let's kick this off by animating the rear wing. But before we get into it, there are a few things to check. And the most important thing is to update your base code by using the links in the description. First up, make sure the car's data is unpacked, meaning you should see a data folder inside the car's folder. No data folder, that's a no-go. Next, head over to the CM showroom and take a close look at the rear wing. Click on it. If it's an actual separate object, we're good. But if it's looking like it's merged with the rest of the car, yeah, that's bad news. Time to pick another car. But that's not all. Click on the Setups button in the Cars menu and check if the car has an arrow setup adjustment. This tells us the car has adjustable wings. If there's no arrow setup, it's another no-go for now, and you'll want to pick another car. Don't worry, I'll show you how to add an arrow setup to a car later. Once you've got all that sorted, let's check out the arrow.ini file. We're looking for the index ID of the rear wing. In this example, the number's two. Keep that in mind. Now, grab the aerodynamic animations code from the base code and paste it into the car's config. And don't forget to update the wing parameter with two, since that's the ID for the rear wing. Now we're getting to the interesting part, the name parameter. You've got two options for what to put here, either the rear wing object name or the root node of the rear wing. If one doesn't work, the other will, and sometimes it works for both. Now, if you're scratching your head like, what the heck is a root node? Don't sweat it. It's basically the parent name of the rear wing object. To find it, first copy the rear wing object name in CM Showroom, then open the previewnodes.ini file. Use the old control F trick to find that rear wing object name you copied. If the object name is sitting under another name, that's your root node. The root node is like the boss of the rear wing and any other parts under it. For this tutorial, I'm keeping it simple and just using the object name instead of the root node. But you can experiment with both depending on how the rear wing is set up. It's all part of the fun, right? And as always, I've left notes next to the parameters in the code so you can see what each one does. Before tweaking anything, take a look live in-game later to see how the current parameter values affect the rear wing. Once you've got a feel for it, make small adjustments. Try changing values by two decimal places at a time to see the subtle impacts on the animation. Just a heads up though, one downside of adjusting these parameters is that the game has to be restarted to fully apply the changes. Even though most modifications in the extension config file are usually visible live. So let's check out how the rear wing animation actually looks in game. Time to load things up. Once you're on the menu screen, the first thing you'll want to do is adjust your camera for a clear view of that rear wing. Hit F7 to enable the free camera mode. This lets you move the camera freely, even here on the menu screen, so you can watch the wing in action without losing sight of the menu overlays. Next, head over to the setup screen and open up the arrow tab. Every time you tweak that rear wing slider, you'll see the wing animate based on the current parameter settings. And by the way, this isn't the only way to catch the animation in action. If you want a cleaner view with no menu overlays getting in the way, you can also see it in drive mode. For that, use the Pocket Technician app from the sidebar. If you don't have the app, just install it from the app shelf first. This app gives you access to all the setups menu options and even better, you can make adjustments live while you're driving. Just keep in mind though that this only works in non-race sessions. Now I'll restart the session real quick to show you a little tweak. The animation seems a bit off, right? If you check the rear wing tooltip here, you'll see it suggests the animation should ideally be moving in the opposite direction. To fix that, just change the x-axis value from 1 to minus 1. Easy as that. And that's pretty much the basics for animating the rear wing. You can easily apply the same technique to other aerodynamic parts like the front splitter and rear diffuser. It's all straightforward once you get the hang of it, but stick around. Up next, we're going to explore some finer details to take these animations to the next level. 
To make understanding these arrow animations easier, let me show you a few tricks. This car, for example, has only parts of the rear wing set to animate, while other parts, like the bolts on each side, follow along smoothly with the main animation. To achieve this, simply list each object in the name parameter, separated by a comma. This approach also works for the front splitter if it has multiple components. Just, just list the object names in the code, separated by commas, like so. And if you want to animate multiple aerodynamic parts, like a rear wing and front splitter, just duplicate the initial arrow code from the car's config file. Then adjust the identifier number for each new part, changing it from 0 to 1, then 2, and so on. Then put the object names or the root node in the name parameter, and finally adjust the parameter values as you like. Now what if your car has aerodynamic parts but no arrow setup menu to adjust and animate them? There's a workaround for that. You can modify the setup.ini file in the car's data folder, but a quick heads up, this change will alter the car's default settings, impacting handling and performance. It may also prevent you from using the car in online races. Typically, a missing arrow setup means the car is restricted to specific race class regulations. But for our tutorial, let's put those restrictions aside. In the base code, you'll find three separate codes for the rear wing, front splitter, and rear diffuser. Just pick the one you need, or grab all three if you're feeling adventurous, and paste it into the car's setup file. Hit save, and just like that, the car now has the arrow settings in its setups menu. It's like giving your car a few extra tweaks under the hood, perfect for experimenting offline. All right, if you've already pulled off a few animations for car aerodynamics, then congrats. You're officially more than just a rookie in this realm. But now we're taking things up a gear with something a bit more advanced, active aerodynamics. This is the good stuff, making those aerodynamic parts or any parts really respond to things like speed, or breaking. And the best part, you won't need any fancy animation files from 3D software. Just a few lines of code will do the trick. Now, full disclaimer, I'm no expert in this. Honestly, I'm as far from an aerodynamics engineer as you can get. Um, but don't worry, it's not rocket science. I'll walk you through the basic idea so you can get the hang of it, and then you'll be ready to experiment and fine tune it to your heart's content. Active aerodynamics can work on any car, even if it doesn't have built-in aerodynamic setups. Assuming you've already figured out basic aero animations, we're only a few steps away. Since I've already set up the basic rear wing animation code, let's say we want to make the rear wing of this car respond to braking. Even though, realistically, this car doesn't have that capability. First, open the active aerodynamics section in the base code. You'll see two controller codes, one for arrow animations that react to braking and another that responds to speed. Choose the code you want, copy it, and paste it into the car's arrow.ini file. Next, head over to the active aerodynamics folder in the downloaded files. You'll find two files there, each matching one of the controller codes by file name. Copy the relevant file into the car's data folder, and you're all set to give this car a little extra flair it never had in real life. Let's break down the parameters in the dynamic controller codes. First up, wing. This is the same as before, representing the index ID of the arrow part you're working on. Then we have down limit and up limit. These set the range for the arrow animation, where down limit is the minimum angle and up limit is the maximum. In this example, the max is set to 31 degrees. I've also added descriptions for each parameter so you can easily understand them and adjust the values to your liking. Now, if you open the wing controller speed.lut file with Notepad, you'll see a list of numbers divided into two parts. The left side represents the car's speed, while the right side indicates the arrow angle at that speed. For instance, when the car reaches 140 km per hour, the arrow angle shifts from 12 to 0 degrees. Similarly, in the wing controller break.lut file, the right side still represents the arrow angle, but the left side now indicates brake force. Here, a value of 1 means the brake pedal is fully pressed. All right, awesome fellas, that's everything I've got for you today. Thanks for sticking with me through this one. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and drop any feedback or questions in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you think. And as always, keep your ride looking cool, keep experimenting, and stay awesome.